Okay, so this is the last lecture. Um, so, because this definition of mixed elliptic motive, universal mixed elliptic motive is long, I will repeat it very quickly. Just so recall. So, the first thing is a universal mixed elliptic motive. It has various pieces, um, and I'll say over M11. Um, one, one time I'll need it over M1 vector 1, and I'll have some notation there, but MEM will denote motives over this guy. Um, what does it consist of? First of all, it, it, um, the first thing is a, a V in MTM, and by that I mean MTMZ. So a mixed tape motive, um, and it's weight filtration. So the whole story is a little confusing because there are two weight filtrations. The weight filtration uh, in MTM is denoted by M dot, not the usual W dot. And there, uh, there's another filtration. W dot, which is also weight filtration. And, um, and, to and it's a filtration by subobjects in MTM. And then the second piece of data is a representation rho um, from SL2Z, which you can naturally identify with pi 1 m11 with base point ddq into the automorphisms of v betty you take the betty realization of this guy and um, that preserve the filtration w dot they don't it doesn't preserve the actual weight filtration of v betty and then um, such that each G R W M of V Betty uh, is a sum of um, symmetric powers of H. So here we're just talking about a representation. The irreducible representations of S L to the algebraic group are just the symmetric powers of the fundamental representation. And N will be congruent to M mod 2. But you don't need, this will follow anyway from the other conditions. And note that this implies here, for example, that um, T, which is 1, 1, 0, 1, acts unipotently. Because you have the filtration W, and each graded quotient is one of these, and T acts. Uh, unipotently on each graded quotient. So, so we're going to set n equal to log t. And um, you can add this as a requirement here or later. Uh, m dot is equal to the relative weight filtration. Of um, n this nilpotent endomorphism. So this is nilpotent. Acting on V, Betty, uh, W dot, right? So if you have a filtered vector space and nilpotent endomorphism, you may have a relative weight filtration. And here you definitely do. It's part of the requirement. And so this also leads you to a filtered local system V W dot over M11 analytic. I guess here I should have put A in. <clears throat> All right, so we want this to be part of a variation of mixed Hodge structure. 
and uh, and I should point out here that the fiber over DDQ in the sense I mentioned before is naturally V Betty. Right? You can to to define this you would have to take Deligne's canonical extension of this and then put a Q structure on the fiber over the cusp and it would be exactly this naturally identified with this rational vector space. And then um, the next part of it, maybe I'll put it over here, is uh, three, you've got a Q uh, vector bundle. So this is the Durham story. V uh, over M11 bar over Q. So that's the same uh, with the connection, with a flat connection. So Nabla will take V into V tensor omega 1 M bar log P, where P is the cusp. So it's got logarithmic singularity. And um, also, you want a Hodge filtration. F dot of this guy here, and you want that nabla of Fp of V is contained in Fp minus one of you know Griffith's transversality. And uh, a weight filtration. So all of these are defined over Q. Um, by th these are by flat subbundles, and you want the fiber over the cusp P to be to be naturally identified with V. You fix an identification with the Durham realization of your mixed state motive. And then the next thing is you have an isomorphism. If you take V tensor C, will be isomorphic to the canonical extension of um, V tensor O M11, right? So this, this is a flat vector bundle. And if you it should be isomorphic to the this guy here, and all these isomorphisms should be compatible with the isomorphism between V Betty. This should respect the isomorphism with V Betty tensor C is isomorphic to V Durham tensor C. And then um, and together, and then um, and together, so this, this V and V is an admissible variation of mixed hot structure. Right, so we've got this admissible variation. Um, and the last part is the, the El Adi Catal part is that, so let me just draw a diagram. So we have uh, SL2Z. This is isomorphic to pi 1 of M11 analytic over um, our base point. We have a representation here into ORT V Betty, but I'm going to tensor it with QL. So I just in, think of it as large, acting on this larger vector space. This guy here maps into pi 1 of M11 over Q bar DDQ. And this guy, this map here is just profinite completion. And um, then here you'll get ORT of the l realization of V. And these guys here are isomorphic via the comparison isomorphism. And so you're getting a representation here. And I'll call this rho hat. And the last condition is that for each L, maybe I'll call it rho hat L, for each L, rho hat L is GQ 
equivariant GQX on the Eladic realization here, and it also acts on this geometric fundamental group of M11, right? And that's the whole definition. So it's a mouthful. That's why I re repeated it. And um, so the other thing I want to review very quickly, I'll say it in just two words, is relative completion. So this is the second thing to recall. And I'll just here I'll just do it for SL2Z. So C is equal to the category of um, finite dimensional representations of SL2Z over Q. So representations on a finite dimensional vector spaces um, that admit a filtration. It can be any filtration that has this property. Um, I'll call it W dot. Um, such that um, the action on each graded quotient of this representation is actually a representation of um, S the algebraic group SL2 and then SL2Z. <clears throat> so this notation is meant to mean that the action of SL2Z on each graded quotient factors through a rational representation of the algebraic group. It's actually a polynomial representation. <laughs> Sorry? Which is the same as the assumption that's... Uh, yeah, so this is, this is just a abstract. But it corresponds to, to your assumption that it's a sum of this. That's thing. right. These local systems will be in that... Those rep that representation will be in here. So rho is in here. Mm -hmm. But we can just consider all these representations anyway. And... Um, So in other words, each of these here is just a sum of things S, M, I, H, right? Uh, and so this is a Tanakhian category. So the relative completion um, of SL2Z is the, is the Tanakhian fundamental group of this category with here. This is just the underlying Q vector space. Mm -hmm. So, um, and what does this guy look like? It is an extension, maybe I'll put here, we have 1 into U rel into G rel into SL, I'll call it SLH, and we have SL2Z here. I'll be a bit sloppy. I should write Q rational points here. Here's the standard inclusion. And there'll be this lift here. This lift is a risky dense. And this guy here is pro-unipotent. And I can't remember exactly how much I um, told you about this last time. I'll say a few more words in a minute, in a little while. But the filtration is not in the category. The filtration exists, but it's not part of the of the category. No, it's just representations yeah, that ad, that admit a filtration. Which I mean, but when you have where from one representation and no, just the no filtration. Is no, for example, I could, if I had a graded quotient isomorphic to this, I could refine the filtration to split each of these into a different graded quotient. The identity mapping and its inverse should be maps in the category, right? So, um, <coughs> and we'll, we'll compute what this is. It's going to boil down to computing what this group is here in a little while. And then the, the goal is that we want, so our goal is to compute pi 1 of MEM with respect to some useful base point. Um, usually Betty or Duran. Um, so 
So let me just remind you of some things we said last time. The first is that we have pi 1, what I call geometric, the geometric part of pi 1 of MEM. And then I map into pi 1 MEM. And then I'll map into pi 1 of mixtate motives. So if I take a representation of that, it's a mixtate motive. When I pull back here, it's a geometrically constant mixed elliptic motive. There's a section here coming from the base point, because we know the fiber over the base point's a mixtate motive. So if you take a mixed elliptic motive and you forget everything but the initial V, you've got an object of this category, and that's giving you a section. Um, also, I'll be sloppy here just to save time. If I put QL here, just to give you an idea of what might be going on here, I could put pi 1 of uh, M11 over, say, Q bar. Uh, pi 1 of M11 over Q. And then GQ here, so we've got the standard exact sequence. There's going to be a map here. This is going to correspond to looking at the monodromy basically this representation here. Uh, There's a natural map here, and we'll get an induced map here. So this exact sequence really does look like the usual exact sequence of the geometric fundamental group, the arithmetic fundamental group, and the Galois group. Okay. So, um, all right, so that's the end of the... And I think realization. Yeah. So um, that's the end of the review. So now the little test. Uh, <clears throat> so let me do the density argument, because I was trying to explain that in a clumsy way last time, and it wasn't complete. And also, it, I have to do this stuff anyway. So I'm going to start with a theorem. And it's a, um, it's a special case of a general result, which I don't want to state. Um, and the general results actually with something I've been trying to write up for years with various people. I'm now going to write up with Greg Perlstein. It was going to be with uh, Matsumoto and Terrasoma. But I discovered that when you try to write a paper with four authors, it, Nothing much gets written, so except. Um, but anyway, um, and so this version is written up. I, I put a paper on the web the other day called uh, Hodge-Durham theory of modular groups, and it's proved in there, or it's sketched in there. So um, it, the theorem says this: for each base point. Uh, and I should point out here, the base point we most want to use is DDQ um, of M11 analytic. Um, the coordinate ring of GREL, so implicit in this is that I'm identifying SL2Z with the fundamental group of M11 analytic with that particular base point. In the case, the way I've set things up, SL2Z is naturally isomorphic to pi 1 of this with this base point, right? And this is the one I'm going to be using. So you might as well just think of this base point. Um, has, well, is a Hopf algebra in the category of end mixed Hodge structures. So that by this I mean it has it's a direct limit of mixed Hodge structures. And the co-product and the product and the antipode all preserve Hodge and weight filtrations, Q structure, and so on. Uh, so for all finite base points, I proved this in a much older paper. And the second part is, um, so let's let M, H, S, M, 1, 1, H. This is going to be equal to the category
admissible variations of mixed hot structure over M11 whose weight graded quotients are uh, sums of sums as variations of as polarized variations of hot structure sums of symmetric powers of H tensored with A where this is a constant hot structure so note I'm allowing more than just Tate things here If you restrict it to just QN, you go, this result is not true. Um, those I'd call Eisenstein variations. OK, so um, then the fiber at the base point uh, induces an equivalence of categories. It's going to take MHS into what I'll call H rep G rel. And what do I mean by this? Uh, so th this, this is Hodge representations. And so what do I mean by this? Um, a Hodge representation would be a V equals a mixed Hodge structure plus an action V into, well, if we write it down as an algebraic group, right? So it's, this is, a, if V is a, a mixed Hodge structure, then it's a mixed Hodge structure, <laughs> deep statement. And if um, v is a representation of this group, you have this map here. And now this guy we know has a mixed Hodge structure, that's what part one says, and so we require that this be a morphism. So this is a morphism. You could also say it if the group's connected as it is here, if you took the Lie algebra of the group That's what it means for this to be a Hodge representation. So implicit in this is somehow that, you know, when you take the fiber at the base point, you get a mixed Hodge structure, that the monodromy representation is a morphism. And conversely, if you have a, a mixed Hodge structure and a Hodge representation, you can construct the variation. And the variation will be unique by the theorem of the fixed part. And so th there's a, a version of this I proved with Steve Zucker almost 30 years ago. Well, he probably proved it 30 years ago. It was published in 87. <laughs> That's the unipotent case, but this is the general case. And so this is useful to us. Um, ah, and so let me restate this in a, another way. So yeah. the corollary is that uh, Pi 1 of MHS M11H is isomorphic to Pi 1 of mixed Hodge structures semi direct product G rel. So, why does this make sense? Um, so, this is a Tanakian category. This is the fundamental group of this Tanakian category. This group has a mixed Hodge structure which is the same as saying this group acts on it. So I can form the semi-direct product. And if you think about it, a Hodge representation of this group is the same as a representation of this group. Right? So, um, yeah, representations of this 
representations of this whole group equals Hodge representations of GREL. It's a similar situation to this. I mean, what's a, a represent, you know, we've got a splitting here coming from DDQ. What's, what's, what's a representation of this group? You can think of it as a uh, GQ equivariant representation of this group on a Galois module. Just the, exactly the analogous statement. All right, so now, um, so here's an observation is that we can take MEM and we can take it to uh, M and we just take, we just take a mixed, we take a mixed elliptic motive, it's just going to go to the underlying variation of mixed hot structure. Mm -hmm. And now if we use the fact that the Hodge realization of a mixed Tate motive is fully faithful, you can see this guy here is fully faithful. Right, so, uh, and so another corollary of this, or I've written down as a theorem in the notes, I'll put it on the next one. Um, so, so theorem is that uh, G rel, the natural representation I constructed last time from G rel into pi 1 geometric of mixed elliptic motives is subjective. And this, this is good because we're going to be able to compute what this guy is. And that's going to bound the size of this. So you remember that somewhere on those boards here we have pi 1 of MEM as an extension of pi 1 of mixed Tate motives, which we know by pi 1 of MEM. So, and so let's do the theorem. Proof. This statement here, this statement right here says that star is equivalent to saying that uh, pi 1 MHS semi-direct product G rel subjects onto pi 1 of MEM. Is subjective. And now, um, and then you just look at the um, diagram here, you'd have G rel uh, pi 1 MHS. I mean, the, the idea is pretty straightforward here. And this is pi 1 of MTM. And in both cases, you have a splitting given by DDQ. Every, you can check everything fits together. Um, this map is just taking, is induced by the Hodge realization of MTM. This is subjective. This is subjective. And you can, this guy's subjective. <coughs> Another corollary, this, this may be obvious from Tanakian considerations, but we get it for free here, is, uh, oh no, this, well, I'm going to explain, this guy cannot be an isomorphism. So I'll just give you a little preview. The unipotent radical of this is generated by Eisenstein series and cusp forms. The unipotent radical of this is generated only by Eisenstein series. And so the kernel is generated by cusp forms, and they're going to impose relations down here. And here, this is huge, and, um, but it, you might ask, what's the smallest 
category of mixed hodge structures you can put here, and Francis has something that he's pushing, is uh, what he calls mixed modular motives, basically the hodge structures you got out of modular forms. And so that's, so it's going to be bigger than, than uh, just pi 1 of MTM because it's got to be big enough to contain the hot structures that correspond to cusp forms. So, um, yeah, so a corollary, I'll just put it over here, is that the kernel of um, pi 1 m E M, there's a map to GL of H, and remember this is the uh, fundamental group of the category of semi-simple mixed elliptic motives. So, anyway, the statement is this is unipot is pro unipotent, but I that should just follow because the kernel is what controls extensions of these, and you can only extend by stuff of lower weight. But anyway, it certainly implies this result. All right, so we're going to denote the kernel. So the kernel I'll denote by U, M, E. Yeah, U, M, E, M, I think. So we've got an extension 1 into U, M, E, M into pi 1. MEM into GLH. Mm -hmm. And again, you can split this guy apart into its geometric part. You'll have, you've got UMEM will map to what I call K. This is the Lie algebra. Yeah, let me put Lie algebras here. So there'll be the geometric. So I can break it into its, the part coming from mixed Tate motive. So this guy here is essentially the freely algebra on Z3, Z5, Z7, and so on. And this guy here is the geometric part. We're going to see that this guy, up to the action of SL2, is generated by Eisenstein series. That's our next goal. Right, so let's understand um, so start up here you've got one into u rel and it maps into GREL, maps into SLH, into 1. Mm -hmm. and, if you, and this guy's pro-unipotent. And now Levy's theorem says we can choose a section here. So Levy says we can do this. So this says our GREL is isomorphic to SLH semi-direct product U rel. Mm -hmm. Not only that, I should say this is unique up to conjugation by an element here. So it's unique up to conjugation by U rel. You don't have the right for kernel one. Sorry? You don't have a kernel one. No, not that I know of. I mean, you can write down, you can prove there are natural choices but not canonical choice, as far as I know. OK, so yeah, when, once you put this in here, this group acts on this. So it says that, that U rel, that's the Lie algebra of the kernel, is acted on by SLH. So it's a pro-nilpotent Lie algebra in the category of SL2 representations. Right, so this is. Pro nilpotent 
uh, Lie algebra in rep of SLH. I should say sort of completed representations, right? <clears throat> okay, so now we want to write down a presentation of this. So, um, yeah, and I should also point out this guy is exactly U rel. So knowing this is exactly the same as knowing that, you lose no information by going to the unipotent radical. So, um, so the next thing to do is you've got U rel and it maps into H1 of U rel. This is subjective and it's also SL2H equivariant. So you can choose an SL2 equivariant section. So this is SL2 or SLH equivariant section. You just choose one. So this, this will give you a subjection from the Lie algebra generated by H1 of U rel. Well, it'll map to U rel. So the, the section induces this, and I have to complete, right? And this will be subjective. So this is the first step towards writing down a presentation. In fact, it will be minimal because you can't make the generating set any smaller here because it, it's an isomorphism on H1. And now what about, um, so let's let the kernel be R. So this is some ideal. So this is contained inside L bracket L because it's a maps an isomorphism on H1. And, sorry? L is this free Lie algebra. Yeah, L is the free Lie algebra, yeah. Um, saving chalk. So, um, so Hopf, this is the standard argument for group, the, the H2 of a group, there's a formula due to Hopf. It's easy to, it applies equally to Lie algebras. And if you use this condition here, you see that H2 of U rel is isomorphic to R mod R L. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so if you think about it, this is all relations modulo consequences of all relations, right? So it's essentially a minimal set of relations. So I want to stress this, this sort of argument gives you, um, by the way, I should say this Hopf argument, all it does is just telling you that the, the cohomology of A freely algebra is trivial in degrees greater than one. So what you can do here um, is you can, you've got a map of R onto this, choose an SL2, SLH section. And now, um, a little exercise is, you can see the image, the image of this section will be a minimal set of generators of this ideal. So what you will see is that U rel is isomorphic to the freely algebra on H1 of U rel, completed, modulo, um, let me, if I call this section C, you can look at the image of C closure. And, and the image of this guy is isomorphic to H2U, right? Because the image here exactly th has to inject. You mean the ideal it's the ideal generated by the image of C. So the relation between H1 being generators and H2 being relations is much stricter for pro, it's perfectly strict for pro -nil potent Lie algebras, right? So the reason I wrote that up is because the game is we're trying to find a presentation of um, the unipotent radical of uh, pi 1 of MEM. But you don't need any assumption about HC, etc. Sorry? To stay this. You have no assumption about uh, the higher homology group. No. 
By the way, this discussion works equally well. I just did it here for URL, but it works well for any, any pronial potent Lie algebra in the category of representations of a reductive group. Um, all right, so what's the... So here's a theorem, and it's, it's by this person called Easy, um, is that 1 is that H1 of U rel tensored with SNH, and if you take the SLH part of this, invariant part, this is isomorphic to H1 of SL2Z. And I should point out here that this vanishes when N is odd. That's standard. The whole point is that minus the identity is central in here. And there's a, you can see it with modular forms, but from group cohomology, there's an argument called center kills and minus 1 acts non-trivially on these, so it has to kill those groups when n is odd. Um, and so this is good because we want to find a presentation here. Well, we just have to understand these cohomology groups of SL2Z, which is going to be Eichler Shimura, and now we need to at least bound H2. So uh, 2 is that H2U rel, Yeah, so this is telling us about the SN isotypical part of this guy here. It's a representation of SL2. It's telling us it's this. And this guy is contained in H2, SL2Z, SNH. But this group here is trivial because this is because SL2Z is virtually free. So a group has virtually a property if it has a finite index subgroup with this property. SL2Z has a finite index subgroup which is free. Just take any modular curve that corresponds to a torsion-free group. It's an affine curve, so its fundamental group is free. It's perfectly standard. And then a little uh, spectral sequence argument shows that as long as this group here is sort of divisible, um, the cohomology vanishes. So what's this telling us? It's telling us that H2 is 0, so there are no relations. So it's telling us the unipotent radical is free. Corollary. U rel is free. So U rel, it's isomorphic, but not naturally isomorphic to Dual tense completed. And you have to complete, you have to t look at all the finite dimensional nilpotent quotients and take their inverse limit. And I should point out here, this, this here, So um, yeah, I'm going to point out something here, which um, maybe I don't have to do it, but I will. because I think it makes everything clearer, observations and notation. So remember, 
H is the fiber of Delene's canonical extension over the vector d d z, right? And so H has the first one is that H has a natural basis. So H we know is isomorphic to Q plus Q of minus one. That's a calculation we did in an early lecture. And I can write out either the Durham, I'll write out both the Durham version and the Betty version. So the Betty version, this is Q of A plus uh, Q of W. And in the Betty version, it's Q of A plus Q of B. And the relation between W and B is W is equal to 2 pi I inverse times B. And so, right, and we won't, but we actually computed this. If we used a tangent vector, if instead I used lambda times d d q, where lambda was not plus or minus 1, I couldn't say this because it, this would be a non-trivial extension of this by that, and you wouldn't have a natural basis. But because it's split, you have, have a natural basis. And um, sorry, this should be a minus here. I'll put minus w equals that. So it's a direct sum, not an extension. It's not an extension. It's a direct sum. It's saying, so the point I want to make is that the SL2 has a natural torus. And we're going to have a natural you know, roots and all of this. So, um, I mean, the representation theory is trivial, but uh, we want to nail down a torus and so on. So, um, and also if you take n to be log uh, t is equal to um, a, a, d, d, b, and the, the, um, The Durham version is equal to uh, AD minus A. Yeah, it's a minus there, minus A D D W. These are all followed from calculations we did earlier. And it lowers weights by two. Lowers, lowers M dot weights by two. It's getting confusing because we have SL2 weights M weights and W weights. They're all related. This is, um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to set E0 equal to this guy here, minus A D D B. And so um, acting on a symmetrical symmetric algebra of the page. When you write it as a differential operator, you mean? Yeah, because I want to know how to apply it to, to elements of symmetric powers. So, um, so what does this tell us? It says there is a natural choice of, of torus. So um, we'll have A will have weight 1, B will have weight minus 1. It's natural to give A has got weight uh, or do I want it the other way around, I think. Sorry, A has weight minus 1 and B has weight plus 1, right? So this has lower M Hodge weight than that. And I want N, N, and N, E0, has weight minus 2, has SL2 weight. This is, these are SL2 weights. And another notation I want that Francis doesn't like is that um, so SNE is defined to be the SLH module with highest weight vector E. 
See, we're going to need lots of different copies of Sn, and I want to be able to label them and write down their elements. And so this is just going to be the span of the e0 to the j times e. Um, mod uh, e0 to the n plus 1 times e equals 0. Mm -hmm. So let's look at a quick review of Eichler, Shimura, Mann, and Drinfeld, and I put Zucker's name in there as well because so I don't know if Zucker belongs in here or not. I think, I think of it that he does because I use the way he does the Hodge theory for SL2. You know, to put the Hodge, the Hodge theory has to be put in the framework of the whole Deleen machine. Um, plus Mann and Drinfeld. So, um, so one is that H one of M one one analytic S two N H, which is the same as H one S L two Z S two N H, has a natural mixed hard structure. The um, and let's when n is 0, I'll leave it for you. h1 and h2 both vanish. Right, so 2, I'll take n to be positive, and then you have an exact sequence, the cuspidal cohomology, which is the same actually as the intersection homology of m11 bar with coefficients in s2 and h. This maps to h1, And then it maps to Q. It's actually useful to think of this as um, S2N H mod um, E0 times S2N H. It's naturally isomorphic to this, twisted by minus 1. <coughs> it's the co-invariance. Um, and so, I have colored chalk here for a reason. So, so this part here, this is a hot structure of type 2n plus 1, 0, and 0, 2n plus 1. And this part here um, is a, if you put the, well, um, this part here is of type 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1. So it's really a copy of q minus 2n minus 1. So yeah, question is, um, who was the first person to say these should be the Hodge numbers of this and write it down and explain it? I mean, that's, what I, that's why I give Zucker credit here, I mean. So, um, Right, and so this part here, these are the cusp forms of, of cusp form weight 2n plus 2. Yeah, we have m weights, w weights, weights of cusp forms, and SL2 weights. Um, and these are the anti-holomorphic. I'll just say they're complex conjugates.
And this part here is corresponds to the Eisenstein. G two N plus two. And I'll say a little bit more about that in one second. Um, three is that uh, this is Mann and Drinfeld. Um, this this extension is split. By over Q, I mean I'm viewing these as Q mixed hard structures and not Z mixed hard structures. So, um, so it's a direct sum. The middle guy is naturally a direct sum. And you split it using Hecker correspondences. Um, you were asking for the extension and said, you see, there is no extension. That's correct. So I guess. I think Manon proved it for in weight two or something, and then I guess the Drinfeld probably realized the same argument applies in general. So, um, and let me just say a word about how cusp forms determine, or modular forms determine the cohomology class. So F is a, uh, a modular form, say a holomorphic modular form of weight, say 2n plus 2. You can define omega f to be equal to, I like to think of it this way, it's f of tau times w to the 2n. So I, I define this guy to be a section of the bundle h. You know, remember, w at tau is equal to uh, 2 pi i times dz, which you think of as an element of h0 omega 1 of c mod lambda tau of the lattice associated with tau times dq over q. And, um, and if you recall, if this looks different from the usual picture, this is just minus 2 pi i b plus log q times a, or t if you like, 2 pi i tau. So it's the usual formula. Um, and this guy is an element of, it's a one form on the upper half plane with coefficients in S, well, in S2NH. And it's SL2Z invariant. But that's the same thing in this orbifold world as a one form on M11 analytic with coefficients in S2n. Here I should have put. That's right, yeah. OK, so, uh, and this gives you a class in F2n plus 1, H1m. 1, 1 analytic. So that explains these things here. And the other classes are the complex conjugates of these. Yeah. Yeah, why is it in this level of the Hodge filtration? This guy is in F1, so its 2nth power is in F2n, and you're picking up. This guy is giving you an F1 here. <clears throat> OK, so um, I'm going to let B2N plus 2. This equals the normalized Hecker uh, uh, eigencusp forms. I never know how to punctuate this of weight 2n plus 2. Right? So we get a basis. Well, I mean the coefficient is 2 is 1. Yes. 
And so, um, so what's a basis of, of H1? You'll get the omega F, the omega F bars, um, F in B to N plus 2, uh, union um, the omega corresponding to G to N plus 2. And if I need to, I'll denote this by psi to N plus 2. Right, so that you get a natural basis of cohomology out of uh, normalized cusp forms. But you need a cusp form and its conjugate but you only need one Eisenstein series. And this guy spans the copy of this guy here. OK. All right, so um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll write this down very quickly. And then I'll stop for a break. But let's try to put this together. So what is, um, so let's let E F prime, E F double prime, F in B to N plus 2 be a basis uh, dual to the above a basis of H1 dual, you know, with color, uh, dual to that, to this one up here, right? So wait, remember that H1 of u, recall that H lower one of u rel, it's going to be isomorphic to the direct product of H1, M11 analytic, S2NH, dual tensor S2NH. Right? So these are just vector spaces, and this is where SL2 acts, right? And URL is unnaturally freely generated by this guy here. So note that we have lots of copies of S2N. We have ones for a different thing. So basically, the trick is to find a basis of this. So yeah, and also we have that URL is isomorphic to the freely algebra on H1 of URL completed. Mm -hmm. So this is telling us that URL is isomorphic as an SL2 representation, but not naturally. It's isomorphic to the Frehley algebra generated by the direct sum n greater than or equal to 1, S2n, E2n plus 2. So that's saying you take a copy of S2n for the Eisenstein series. This is the guy dual to the Eisenstein series plus plus the sum over the eigenforms, eigencusp forms. I'm just trying to give you some idea of how big this and nasty this thing is. Uh, well, it's not nasty. It's actually very beautiful. But for every cusp form, you get two copies of Sn because you've got because the cusp form gives you a two-dimensional hot structure. And it's S2N E F double prime. Mm -hmm. And so think about what elements of this are. I mean, an element of this would be something like E F prime times E0 to the J, right? So the usefulness of the E0 is it generates all of these pieces, right? And so everything in here, so this is somehow it's generated by, I'll be very sloppy, it's generated by E0 to the J times E2N plus 2s, E0 to the J's times EF primes, and E0 to the J's times EF double prime. And you have to take all N's and all F's and so on. No, no tape twist. 
Well, I'm going to put these guys in their natural place. So let me, um, yeah, so I've got my color here again. This part here is isomorphic to S2NH, 2N plus 1. And so this is, this is going to have W weight. Okay. Um, this says W weight uh, minus 2N minus 2. That's why I put this 2N plus 2 there. It's, it gives you, it's negative as the weight. And these pieces here, these have W weight equals minus 1. Yeah, th and this is actually, um, at first it looks bad, but it turns out to be very good. And in the notes, I won't put it on the board. I have a picture of the Hodge types. So, I, um, and all of this stuff I'm doing here is in this paper I recently put on the archive, hodge Durham theory. It's in, in detail. Um, so let's take a break, a coffee break. And then th the next goal is to see what this says about, um, so after the break, our goal is to understand basically UMEM. -E We're not there yet. I mean, we being, say, for example, Francis and myself. Um, we're trying to understand what this guy is. And we, can, we know how big the relations are, unless there's something very bizarre that violates the order of the universe. So we know, what do we know? So we have an exact sequence. So this is this is the unipotent part of pi 1 of MTM. Yeah, I'm concentrating on the unipotent parts or the pro-unipotent parts because the reductive parts are all um, well understood. The reductive part here is GM. The reductive part here is GLH. And the reductive part here is SLH. Right? And so these are the unipotent parts of pi 1 MEM, the geometric pi 1 of MEM, and this is the geometric part of mixed tape motives. And so we have a corresponding exact sequence of pronilpotent Lie algebras, U, I think I might just call it U geom, maps to U M E M, and it will map to K. And remember, this is the free guy LZ3. Z5 and so on. And right. And so a silly little proposition is that U M E M and U G M are pro objects. of MTM. And this is silly because, uh, watch the proof, we have pi 1 of mixed tate, sorry, mixed, yeah, of mixed tate motives, it maps into the automorphisms of pi 1 of mixed elliptic motives <coughs> by the base point DDQ, right? And it preserves the homomorphism to GLH, so it, it, that's saying that <coughs> pi 1 of MTM acts on this, and it also acts on that, so therefore they're both mixed Tate motives. 
so um, so H one of right, but yeah. So this this a corollary is let's put it this way a corollary is that H one of U M E M and H one of U G M are you know have pro mixed Hodge structures of Tate type. All their graded quotients are of type PP, right? Because they're Hodge realizations of mixed state motives. But they're also quotients they are, well, but U geom is a quotient of uh, U rel. Sorry about all these abbreviations. It's, we have many kinds of weights and we have many kinds of adjectives we apply to Lie algebras. So, um, right? so a pronilpotent Lie algebra is in some sense generated by its H1. So we need to understand the map on H1. So uh, we've got U rel maps onto U geom. Remember, this is to make it absolutely clear. This is the this is the motivic guy here, and this is the relative completion of SL two. And now um, I meant to put H one in here. So the first thing we want to understand is how big can this guy be? Well, we know this guy here is the direct sum. So from what I did over here up there is that this is the direct sum n greater than or equal to 1 s 2 n 2 n plus 1 that's the Eisenstein part plus it's got the cuspidal part I'm going to write it like this VF dual tensor s 2 n h and um, here VF is equal to the span of, um, okay. I'm going to be slightly sloppy. These guys are really defined over a number field, a totally real number field, but I'm going to pretend they're defined over the reals or the rationals. So it'd be the class of omega f plus the class of omega f uh, bar, right? This is, this is the, the one form that represents the cohomology class corresponding to F. So this is a two-dimensional Hodge structure. Sorry? No, no, it's of type 2n plus 1, 0, and 0, 2n plus 1. Right? So, and this guy here is Tate. When I say it's it's, it's Tate, I mean, at, at the, yeah, this is where it gets confusing. We've got to think of it at the base point DDQ. At DDQ, the symmetric power of H here becomes mixed Tate, right? So, but this guy can never be mixed Tate. This guy will degenerate to um, a direct sum of copies of Q of N or Q of J for some J. This guy will never go away. You can never make these Hodge numbers equal, right? So this part here has to be the kernel. This part here, and so th this is a key thing to understand. This part here goes to zero. This is the kernel on H1. And we've got to be careful because the H1 is not the canonical generators, but we have to use the fact that in the land of Hodge theory or the land of motives, the functors GRW, and GRM are both exact. All right. So, so what does this imply? So this implies that um, H1 of U geom, the motivic guy here, MEM, 
is a quotient of the direct sum n greater than or equal to 1, S2NH, 2N plus 1. So we know the generators there. So these are, so, the, so it's generated by Eisenstein series. I'll put, you've got to correctly interpret these statements, but they're, they're correct, suitably interpreted. All right. So, um, and so a, cor so a corollary of this is that, well, I'll write down as a proposition, is in fact that H1 of U of U M E M is equal to the direct sum n greater than or equal to 1, q of 2n plus 1, plus the direct sum n greater than or equal to 1, uh, s2nh, 2n plus 1. So this is the Eisenstein part. So this, uh, this is also the geometric part. Because this much is, is H1 of U geom. And this part here is the part coming from K. This is H1 of K, the Lie algebra generated by the odd zeta values. So these are zeta values. So this is the mixed Tate motive story. Hmm? So the Eisenstein series of the geometric part and the zeta values are like the Galois part. Sorry? That gives the generators. Th these will give generators. They won't live canonically to generators. So, um, so the next thing I'll talk about discusses the Eisenstein quotient. Sorry? Sorry. Why, why do none of those? Eisenstein elements get killed. Ah, so yes, sorry, I forgot to explain that. So um, there's so proof. You only, we only need to produce a mixed elliptic motive where all these guys are non-zero. And so proof um, one is uh, well, the best one I know is that um, in the beginning I wrote down a mixed elliptic motive. So P which is the mixed elliptic motive, which was defined to be the Lie algebra of um, pi 1 unipotent of E prime, elliptic curve minus the identity of over DDQ. So essentially the first order Tate curve um, with a suitable tangent vector as an object of um, mixed elliptic motives or pro-elliptic mixed elliptic motives, and I should say over the thing with vector 1. Right? And then um, there are various ways to see that all these classes are non-trivial here, but I have this paper called Notes on the Elliptic KZB Equation. So it comes out of this work of Levin and Racinet that you see all these extensions are non-zero. So this implies, so you, you get a representation, say, of U geom into dare P, and in a little while, I'll write down where the E2n, E2n plus 2 goes to something not equal to 0. You can write down the explicit derivation. Okay? Um, you also get it out of, I haven't checked everything, all the, or um, the elliptic polar logarithms. I'm sure everything is in the paper of Balance and Levin, everything. I need to check this, right? But, I mean, I know the elliptic poly logarithms are motivic. 
in this sense. So, and they realize sort of the nth elliptic polylogarithm restricted to the zero section realizes the nth one of these. All right, so So what we have here is we have G rel, the Lie algebra of the relative completion. And this guy's definitely not a Tate Hodge structure. It's got a Hodge structure, but it's not Tate. Even at, not Tate, at, say, DDQ. Because you have these, in its pure quotients, you get, mod, uh, you get the Hodge structures of cusp forms appearing. And now it's mapping into G of, well, say if maybe the geometric pi 1, it maps onto this one here. And this guy here is Tate. It's mixed Tate. It's a tate hodge structure. So you might ask yourself, what's the maximal Tate guy you would put here? And I want to call it the Eisenstein quotient, right? So what's, what's the biggest quotient of this, where all the graded quotients are of the form S, N, H, t uh, sums of things like this, where I do not allow things like this tensored with VF, right? These guys are out. These guys are in. And see, when I go to the base point DDQ, H becomes Tate. So this, this guy will be mixed Tate at the base point. So that's what the mixed Tate, uh, the Eisenstein quotient is. So, um, so G ice is equal to the maximal quotient of G rel uh, in the category of groups with mixed hot structure whose weight graded quotients I should say the weight graded quotients of its Lie algebra, but I'll be sloppy, um, are sums of S2, SNH Rs. Mm -hmm. And it's also, you can check that it's pi 1 of the category of admissible variations of mixed Hodge structure over M11. Uh, with G R W dot of, of V, it, uh, a sum of S N H R's. Meaning you can't have S N H tensored with a constant Hodge structure like V of F. Right? So this, this is, a, or, well, it's interesting that this guy is not going to be the same as G rel because of these cusp forms. Mm -hmm. so, so we have factorization. We've got G rel maps to the Eisenstein quotient. It's called this because it involves, it's Durham theory only involves Eisenstein series. We're going to have the geometric pi 1 of MEM. So we have this factorization. This is subjective. And now you might ask, uh, what can you say about, first of all, what can you say about G ice? And what can you say about this map? And I'll jump the gun a little bit and say there's quite a bit of evidence to suggest this is an isomorphism. Um, so. Um, let's see if we can understand this. Yeah. 
I'm going to jump ahead a little, little bit and jump back. Huh? Uh, maybe not. All right, so we want to understand this. So let's get a some sort of lower bound on what it's like. And so um, so let, let's say project is understand Okay, so fact is that if I looked at pi 1 of m e m, uh, sorry, I didn't do this right. So if I look at g rel, and I'll call it 1 vector 1, so this equals the relative completion of pi 1 of m 1 vector 1, DDQ, well, appropriate base point here. Yeah, it's not what I wanted to write. Well, I'll write this here. Um, I'll call it 1, 1, crossed with what I'll call GA of 1. Just a copy of GA. Where, uh, but the corresponding Hodge structure is of type minus 1, minus 1. And I also want pi 1 of MEM, 1 vector 1 is isomorphic to pi 1 of MEM, the usual one cross GA of 1. So this is proved in that manuscript I've put on the archive, that you get this product here. And you can also prove this. It's not hard. Um, and the reason I introduced a, a base point is I want to consider the action on the unipotent fundamental group of the Tate curve that I wrote down over there. So we have. We have an action, say, of um, G1 vector 1 into ORT uh, P. The appropriate base point. Right. And so this means Li pi 1 unipotent. Okay. And because of this statement up here, the map down to G11 actually is split, so we have a representation into here. And we can look at Lie algebras. Uh, and I should point out, this guy here, remember, is it's a, it's a mixed elliptic motive. So everything here is Tate. E prime is a Tate curve. Sorry? E, e prime is a Tate curve. Yeah, so I'm taking, if you like, the Tate curve, the curve on, on the disk, and I, I either think of it in Hodge theory, I think of it as being the fiber over the tangent vector ddq here. Or in Galois theory, you think of it as over, say, q bar q to the 1 over n. Right? It gives me an elliptic curve over this guy here. So um, <coughs> and this is a morphism of mixed Hodge structures. Again, this follows from an old result I also prove it in these elliptic KZB nodes. And so you get a, a map here from U rel. So I should say rel here. You get a map from U rel into um, the derivations on, on, on this P. So let me just call this P. And now I can take the weight graded of u rel into, into the weight graded here. And I end up in what's called dare 0. Um, so graded weight p is naturally isomorphic to the Frehley algebra on h. Okay? So the weight filtration for this Lie algebra is its lower central series. Its h1 is canonically h, which gives us this thing here. 
So I'm looking at the Frehley algebra on H. So this is canonical. And now, um, because GRW is an exact functor, you use, lose no information by going from here to the associated graded. This is a standard Hodge theory or standard motivic type argument. And now we have the E2N plus 2s here. They go to certain derivations here. And I won't, they're easy to write down, I won't do it. But let me, um, so we're trying to understand if these E's satisfy any relations. Uh, and I should say before I do this, this factors through GRW dot U ice into here. And now the E2N plus 2 is going to go to a derivation. And just to get the normalization right, um, yeah. Well, would, so I'm going to define epsilon 2n to be equal to the image of E2n times 2n minus 2 factorial divided by 2. I believe I have the correct normalization. So just a rescaling of these guys here. Ah, so, thank you. So, um, right, so this mapping class group G11, you can think of it's the mapping class group of a genus 1 curve with one boundary component. And so those mapping classes act trivially on the boundary. We're actually using a tangent vector. Same thing, they don't, you're not allowed to turn the tangent vector. So that, what that, it's hard to write down what that condition is here, but on the associated graded, you're looking at the derivations delta, such the delta of the, the bracket of the, the two generators is equal to zero. Right? So that's what dare zero is. Zero means you kill the commutator. Yeah. And so H, remember, has naturally has this basis A and B. And uh, right, so when I started doing this, which, believe it or not, was around 2007, uh, some undergraduate named Aaron Pollock walked into my office, and he wanted a problem. And for reasons I'll explain in a little, uh, so he's now a postdoc at Stanford. He got a PhD at Princeton. But, um, but he was just this young undergraduate. And there are reasons to believe, which I'll explain in a minute, that these epsilons should satisfy relations, one for each cusp form of each degree. So, for example, the cusp form delta will give you quadratic, cubic, quartic, and so on relations between these derivations. Because we expected them, Matsumoto and I, to hold in the motivic case. We couldn't prove it, but they should hold here. And lo and behold, he found the relation. So let me write down the quadratic ones. So he says that the sum j plus k equal to n, jk positive, cj epsilon 2j plus 2, epsilon 2k plus 2 equals 0 in dare lh, if and only if there is a cusp form. Sorry? No, quadratic's absolute. I'm only doing quadratic. Uh, there is a cusp form uh, F of weight 2n plus 2 such that um, Rf plus of AB. So I'm thinking of this as the modular symbol, and I always think of these things as having meaning. And I'll, I'll write down the definition. But this is the even part of the modular symbol of F, is the sum J plus K equals N. His J and K are greater than or equal to zero. So this can have, this doesn't have the highest order part. 
um, CJ A to the 2J B to the 2N minus J. Um, so what's the modular symbol? So R RF of AB is equal to the integral from 0 to I infinity, so the integral up the imaginary axis of omega F. And I'll remind you, if I write that out, that's equal to the integral from 0 to I infinity of F of tau. I'm actually leaving out a factor of 2 pi I, which doesn't matter, uh, B minus tau A to the 2 N detail. Right, and, and I'll put 2 pi i to the, the way I normalize something, there'll be a power of 2 pi i here. But it doesn't matter because the multiple of a relation is a relation. And Rf plus, so this is a polynomial in A and B, it's an element. And Rf plus AB is equal to the, the part the, the, the terms where um, the degree the degree of A and B are even. Hmm? So um, and let me give you a simple example. That's so, the of G one sorry? That's the area of polynomial. Yeah, but it's not obvious that uh, no, because um, if you have, it doesn't matter. It just every relation corresponds to a cusp form. It doesn't have to be, right? So if I wrote down every relation, quadratic relation is going to be a sum of relations, and you can find if you. Whatever the coefficients are of the ones that correspond to eigenforms, you just write, express your f in that basis, and you, it's true. Sorry? Yeah, there's no, you don't need to specify any basis here. Um, so, for example, if you look at the weight 12 cusp form, what you get is E4, E10, minus 3 times epsilon 6, epsilon 8, is equal to zero. And I could write uh, the weight 16 ones in the notes. But so this is just a, the first uh, one. And now, so the question is, um, are these relations motivic? What do I mean by that? I mean, do they hold, but the corresponding relations hold between the E's, i.e., Motivic guys, the E2n plus 2s, hold in U, G, um, you know, the MEM. I should also mention he found um, in some truncation of the derivation algebra, he found relations of the uh, every possible degree for every cusp form. All right, so let me try to do this in maybe the next 20 minutes. So I want to, the answer is going to be yes, and I want to explain why. So, so the epsilon some explicit derivation in the Lie algebra L of H. Right, I could write it down. I mean, I didn't write down on a piece of paper, but... Um, but they are explicitly defined. Yeah, they appear, you know, so if you look at the paper of Levin and Rasane, they appear there, they appear in older work of uh, Hiroaki Nakamura, and they, in fact, I'll tell you how to find them. It, now, but I'll I won't write down a formula, I'm not good with formulas. If you look at dare zero LH, 
and you look at the part of, um, you look at graded weight minus 2n minus 2 of this thing here. It contains a unique copy of S2n. I think I put it in the right place. Yeah. That's a unique copy. You just take the highest weight vector. So I, I've, got, I've written this up somewhere, but I, it's sitting in a drawer. So, <laughs> um, so this, I mean, they're, they're just very natural, and they come up if you had to write down these derivations. All right, so I have to write, talk about cohomology and extensions. So um, we have forgetful functors. You've got M, E, M, and you've got, say, I'll call them Hodge M, E, M. And you've also got L attic. And they're both faithful. Mm -hmm. So, for example, here you would look at the underlying variation of mixed Hodge structure. Here you would look at the underlying Lee sheaf. And so, what? So, this story starts with Matsumoto. And exact, basically. And exact, yeah. Um, So, what have I got there? So, what we have is um, these induce subjective homomorphisms. Actually, uh, it, on the L-adic side, I'd have to explain why I get surjectivity, but I've got pi 1 of MEM, and then I've got pi 1 of Hodge. So I'm partly motivating what I'm doing here, and what surjects onto this is going to be pi 1 of mixed Hodge structures semi-direct product with G ice. And on the other side, um, there's pi 1 of L attic MEM. And the correct thing to put over here is the L attic weighted completion of uh, pi 1 of M11 over Z1 over L DDQ. So this is where the story started, actually. Matsumoto and I one day sat down in spring of 2007 and computed this guy and got a strange answer that we didn't understand. And that was the basis. A couple of weeks later, I talked to Aaron Pollock, and he knew nothing about modular forms or Frehley algebras or SL2. But a week later, he had the first five relations He's a smart guy. Um, so, um, so on both sides, you, yeah. So I'm going to talk generally, and what I say will apply equally well on this side or this side. You get the same answer, and that is consistent with various conjectures in number theory about. But on um, both sides have. Uh, an isomorphism on H1 of the geometric part, which is the part we're trying to understand. Okay, okay so um, relations correspond to H2. So the H1 is X1. So on the Hodge side, What you get is that, uh, and I don't have time to explain this, but it's an analogous thing on the Galois side that 
might be clearer to. Sorry? Um, and I'm going to take f infinity. This means invariant under real Frobenius, because everything here is defined over z, so it's defined over r, and that's an action. And um, this is going to be isomorphic to, and this. Um, Direct sum, direct sum f in b two n plus two x one. Again, a lot of this is explained in this preprint I put up, and um, the the VFRs are okay here because they're they're actually real Hodge structures, so I can write them down. These are these two dimensional real Hodge structures, and I have to take f infinity. And so if you pull this apart, and I should say this guy here is, oh, this is, uh, this, this is the Hodge. This is in uh, this one here. So it's this is going to be roughly in, in what I think I called MHS M11H, except a, uh, it doesn't matter whether I restrict the graded quotients here or not. So anyway, what is this? This turns out to give you all the things that correspond to um, odd, odd. Well, there's a, a difference between odd and even. And here it's going to be r plus um, the sum of f in b to n plus 2, v f r plus. So these are the. This is, the, this is a one-dimensional thing. It's corresponding to the plus part of the modular symbol. And this is for r even. And it's just equal to the direct sum of the f in b to n plus 2. v f minus r. This is for r odd. Mm -hmm. So real Frobenius acts on this guy. It's two-dimensional. has a plus one eigenspace and a minus one eigenspace. And they correspond to the plus and minus parts of the modular symbol. It's all written up here in Technicolor. Um, and on the Galois side, it's a similar story. Let me just write the Galois guy here. The anal this would be H2 F, well, H2 of M11 over Z, which you have to think about what this means, S2NH. R. So it means unramified, if these are L adic coefficients, unramified outside L, and I'm told it's supposed to be crystalline at L. And then here, this would be H1F of, well, F, I'll just say spec Z of um, QLR minus 2N minus 1. And this one here would be H one F G Q um, V F R. Right, so these are Selma groups, and you see this if you look at the spectral sequence. Maybe if I'd been a bit more honest, I would have put Z one over L or something here. If you look at the spectral sequence from this, from geometric, you know, cohomology to this, you'll see this is the H two. So this is the Hodge analog, and uh, they both work the same way. And and so I'll make a little remark here is that um, nothing. These things shouldn't be too surprising because uh, if you look at the realization maps from X1 mixed motives, whatever they are, or in Fr Francis's favorite category, triple M, multiple, sorry, mixed modular motives, uh, 
tensor R, if you look at the, these guys, and you went into the, the real X1 mixed Hodge structures, R, V, F, R, F infinity, this guy is supposed to be conjecturally an isomorphism. And you've got the Eladic one, you've got X1, M, M, Q, L, V, F, sorry, Q. These guys are supposed to be Oops, too many things. These are conjecturally isomorphisms. Right? So the, what, what should happen here is that you should be getting um, relations. This is, this is telling us that this H2, there are all these different classes in H2 coming from cusp forms. And these should give you relations. And there's going to be two kinds of relations and I'm only going to talk about one, these, these guys here should correspond to uh, relations of the form, you can, Z2M plus 1, E2N plus 2. This should be another geometric quantity, and these relations here should be relations between, these should be geometric relations, meaning they're relations between, between the E's. So, um, so I'm not good at computing periods, but there's this guy, Francis Brown, <laughs> um, and and in part of this a special case. Uh, which says that um, the cup products so I, maybe I need a whole blackboard to write this cup product down um, it goes x1 mixed hard structure m11 r s2j 2j plus 1. So this corresponds to a generator of the a geometric generator of the unipotent radical. And now another guy in x1, R, S2K. And then this guy is going to go into an x2, an x2. Uh, you know, variations of mixed hot structure. Uh, sorry, I'll just write the X2 by what I have over there. It's really an X1 mixed hot structures. R by VF of R. And these generators are Frobenius invariant, so they will land in the Frobenius invariant part. Whoops. Uh, yeah, sorry. I did, I screwed up here. Right, mixed Hodge structure, it's going to be in S2J. Uh, what I, I'm going to have to fix these notes here. So it's X, X2, sorry? X1, X1 cannot go into X1. <laughs> yes, it, it does because of this guy over here. Right? Um, but I, I've got to fix up what I've got here. It's S2J tends to S2K 2N plus 2. So J plus K equals N. And now um, you can project this to an X. It's the appropriate category here. Uh, an X2, first of all, of R by um, S. 2n minus 2r, 2n minus r plus 2, I think. 
Right. You, this, these, are, these are the various projections because the tensor product of these guys is um, not irreducible. It decomposes some of these guys here. And th this guy here is Ah, and now you project onto some x1 mixed Hodge structure of R by, by uh, you know, VFR. And this is um, subjective. You've got to put the correct twist here. It's not VFR, it's VF whatever, subjective every time this group is non-zero, right? And so um, what this tells you, i just try to summarize this quickly. Got, try to stop in one second. And I'm going to try to give a very, a very brief, very concrete explanation of what's going on. I mean, this is all sort of abstract homological argument. Um, But the corollary, what's the whole point? The corollary, Pollock's relations of all degrees, not just the quadratic ones. And the, the higher order ones, with a few exceptions, were all defined in some quotient. We didn't even know if they lifted to relations in the derivation algebra, lift to uh, relations in UGOM, MEM. Strictly speaking, I should say, in the weight graded quotient of, of this, right? So all of these relations, uh, and so, so they are motivic. And um, a remark is that um, if standard conjectures hold, so these are the ones that say these regulator maps, there are isomorphisms, then G ice maps isomorphically onto pi 1 geom. MEM. There's also the question of understanding the relations coming from Eisenstein series. Um, it's being worked on. <laughs> so, and now um, I could stop here, but I would like to give you a very simple picture of why Pollock's first quadratic relation holds. I mean, all of this stuff is abstract, but there's a very concrete reason why it holds, and I'll stop right there. Yeah, the one coming from the cusp form of weight 12. So, um, so what's going on? You know, why are we getting See, cusp forms went from, I'll just remind you, cusp forms were generators of, in the relative completion. This was the free guy, but they become relations in U ice. Why, why did this happen? So I'm going to draw a picture here. We have, um, we have, S2, so inside URL, we have, this is freely generated by a whole bunch of stuff. That includes S2E4, S6, sorry, S4E6, S6E8, S8E10, uh, <laughs> and we also have S, uh, we have V, delta dual tensor S10, right? So this is really equal to S, S10 
EF prime plus S10 EF double prime. Right? So it's a really concrete thing. We've got a freely algebra, and among the generating stuff, we've got all of this stuff here. This has weight. What's the weight? The W weight of this is minus 4, minus 6, minus 8, minus 10. And this guy has weight minus 1. And if that's confusing, this has weight 10, and this has weight minus 11. And so, and in some sense, we want to work in the S10 isotypical part of the Lie algebra. So let's look here, and how can we get things in here? We could bracket this guy and that guy, and we're going to get something in the tensor product of these, but we can project on the highest weight, and we're going to get an S10 with highest weight vector E4, E10. Plus, we're going to get an S10 with highest weight vector E6, E8. Mm -hmm. And we're looking in this S10 part here. Here it is. Um, if you stare at this, you'll see you're getting an extension. This is a sub sort of mixed Hodge structure. We're getting some extension here. E, it maps to V, F, V delta dual tensor S10. And the kernel is this stuff here. Mm -hmm. Now, it turns out everything here is isotypical, S10 isotypical, and you can get rid of the S10. One way to do it is to go to highest weight or lowest weight vectors. So you do that, and you get an extension of uh, what weight is this in? This is in weight minus 14. So you're going to get something here, which is um, basically where you've got Q times E4, E10, plus Q times E6, E8, you're going to get some different extension, and you're going to get a V delta dual. And um, when you put the correct weights in and so on, note the difference in the weights here was uh, 13. Um, this gives you an, an element of X1 of Q by V delta 12, uh, two copies of it. Well, let me do it like this. You get one extension from this, and you get one extension from that. If you believe that everything here is motivic, the motivic, motivically, this, this group is only one-dimensional. So those two extensions have to be proportional. And if you believe the extension is non-zero, if you take a homomorphism into another Lie algebra that sends this to zero, if this extension on some element here is non-trivial, it has to drag this guy to zero with it. So basically, you're getting relations because of non-trivial extensions like this occurring between a cusp form, which goes to zero, and it pulls other junk with it because it's sort of inextricably linked to it. Anyway, that's uh, stop there. So apologies for running over time. <laughs>